Hello guys and what is up? This is Silence Pew Pew and we are coming at you with another video. Today guys we're going to be doing yet another campaign diary for the D&D session that I am running. Um, if you have not, uh, go check out the first video. The first video pretty much just covers backgrounds. Um, I'm hoping this video will get almost caught up. Um, again, uh, these first couple are not going to be very great um, because I don't remember a lot of the specific details that happened so uh it's gonna be kind of um hit or miss basically uh, a lot of the things that i say are actually is everything that i say is gonna have have happened in the game um it just might not be at its most greatest detail of how it happened and you know who exactly was there um but anyways guys we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it Okay, so basically the first person to arrive in the town of Riverdale was, um, I believe it was Magus. So Magus was the first person to arrive. Um, basically, uh, the only entryway into this town is right here. This town is at the end of a road, so this is the final road. So basically I described to them as they were walking down that the path was, you know, it had like stones, um, kind of like the the path was almost made of like dirt and stone um, that were like from somewhere else. As they got closer and closer to the city, though, it just kind of became more dirt. Um, basically, uh, the town of Riverdale here has a population, I believe, of uh, I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. Um, Oh, that's not important. It's it's uh, less than 100, though. I want to say that it's like 50 or 60, but I'm not positive. Um, sorry about that. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, um, so Magus is the first person to arrive. Uh, he's greeted by a guard. Um, so basically they have roughly five guards in this entire town, and one of them is always standing up here at the path entrance way. The guard doesn't stop him, doesn't say anything. Um, he actually asks the guard, like, hey, um, I'm here looking for some uh, somebody, um, and uh, I was wondering if you might be able to point me in the right direction. So she tells him a little bit. She tells him that uh, right over here uh, would be the tavern and the inn, and then down here is the town center where you can find a post, uh, a board message, um, basically, that tells you um, for people who are looking for jobs or looking to hire somebody to do a job. <clears throat> so I do believe uh, Magus goes and looks at the town hall board, message board. Again, there's another guard outside it. Um, like I said, there's really only about five guards in this entire town, and someone has to be posted at the front and here 24-7. So guard hours are not great. <laughs> Um, anyway, so he goes there, he finds the message board, reads uh, a couple different things. Um, so the one message board is asking for um, new uh, help on the farm, um, on a local farm. One is asking for, um, and then the other one, I'm sorry, the other one is actually um, talking about a uh, party that's going to be happening on the tavern in like a day or two. So Magus reads more into the party help or to the farm help one, and finds out that the farmer, uh, the farmer's farm has been being raided by kobolds, and they, um, the farmer's farm, my bad, if I didn't say that right, is being raided by kobolds, and he's willing to uh, pay somebody um, one silver piece for every kobold that they kill, um, so. And it gives him a time to meet up and all this stuff. So Magus keeps that in the back of his mind and then goes over to the marketplace. Kind of just hangs out, doesn't doesn't do much, a whole lot of anything, associates with a few people. At that point, uh, Dio uh, Tree Speak uh, arrives and um, pretty much the same kind of thing. He doesn't really talk to the guard too much. He just kind of walks past her, goes to the tavern, um, meets a few people there. Um... <clears throat> And, again, uh, Dio's um, social skills are not the best. So his, uh, he's trying to communicate with people, but everyone seems to be um, acting weird um, to him, as he would consider. Uh, a lot of the 
there's a female elf in there who's taken a liking to him, and uh, he doesn't understand that she's flirting with him, um, and that uh, she's basically trying to scum him out of some money. Um, at that point, then, I do believe that those two meet up in the market. Again, I'm sorry, I'm not 100% sure on the details of how they met or where they met. Um, but then again, uh, then next, uh, Nashurda comes in, and basically the same kind of thing. I believe he goes to the tavern first, uh, secures himself a place at the inn. So basically the tavern owner owns the inn as well. Um, secures in place, uh, a place to sleep at the inn. Um, all three of them meet up and um, find out that they're all new and that they're all looking for certain things. So uh, Nashurda is looking for two people. Um, they eventually run into the town, the wealthiest person in town, which happens to be a half-orc named Ugra. Uh, now, Ugra is a barbarian who is a gladiator fighter for a local city nearby. It's about a two-day walk to that city, um, walking not by horseback. And Ugra is actually having a town or a house built inside of this city because he wants to live here. This city is one of the cities that is le less um, discriminating. So if you're an elf or a half-elf, most people look at you the same, unless you're an elf. Um, elves are pretty much the only ones that don't see half-elves as anything, you know. They, they think of them as less um, in this town. Uh, in the rest of the world, though, pretty much everyone thinks of half-elves, half-orcs, and tieflings as less or not worthy of life, basically. Um... <clears throat> So, Ugra has set up shop here. Um, the city actually likes Ugra. Most of its residents are okay with Ugra um, because of his gladiator status. However, that's all they really see him as, is a war-hungry beast. Um, and they're glad to see that, but they don't really want to look at him when he's on the streets. And he kind of knows that. Uh, he's definitely the richest person in this city, and actually probably the one that keeps the economy going. Um, the longest uh, because he's hiring people to build his house he buys all of his food from the tavern all of his beer all that kind of stuff um, he actually helps host events he sponsors things um, he's definitely one of the bigger ones um, here uh, oh also actually I did forget there was another posting in the town message board about um, uh, recent crop issues and asked uh, any town's member who was concerned about it to report there. Basically, this economy is built off of an entire uh, f couple of farms. Uh, there's one farm that's much bigger than the rest, and then there's a couple smaller ones that are mainly family-owned. Uh, so the bigger farm, actually, most of its people live in this inn here. Um, and the farmer, basically, what he does is like, hey, I'll pay you guys a little bit of money, um... But you guys, if you guys don't have a house, I'll take away some of that, but I'll give you this inn to live in. And the inn owner always has at least 20 rooms rented out because that's what the farmer buys every single month. And the, room, the inn only has about 30 rooms in total. Um, there is also some deals with the food if you're staying at the inn um, and stuff like that. But as you can see, that's, that's why some of these houses, there's not that many houses here. Like This is the whole town. There's not any other part of the town that's not here. This is basically the whole thing. Um, like I said, there's some farms, but that's about it. Okay, so those three all meet up. They talk about um, this whole cobalt thing and maybe going to it and seeing what happens. <clears throat> so they all get their rooms, and it's happening that night, actually. So they're like, okay, so they're supposed to meet up at the farmer's place. <clears throat> And then they're basically just supposed to stand guard. So he, the farmer tells them, uh, the farmer's name is uh, Yanda. Yeah, Farmer Yanda. Um, he tells them, like, hey guys, just so you know. Um, <clears throat> uh, oh, uh, just so you know, the kobolds have been coming and they've been taking my goats, my chickens. Um, they've been harvesting my field sometimes, which is weird. Uh, kobolds aren't normally acting like this for one. They also don't normally come too close to civilization. 
Um, he said that this is the third time that they've attacked. Um, the first time they came with one armed person and then like two or three like people just to farm. I scared them out, no problem, by myself. Uh, the second time though that they came, um, they came back with some, uh, you know, four or five uh, kobolds who were armed, and I wasn't able to chase them off by myself. I actually had to request some of my local farm hands here, and we scared them off after roughly an hour of planning. Um, so this is the third time. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to come back with more kobolds um, that are armed, so I want to be armed as well. <clears throat> now, they weren't coming every single night. They were coming every two days. So uh, Farmer Yanda said, like, if they don't come today, they'll be coming tomorrow for sure. Um, but we'll see how it goes. So the uh, so at this point, then, um, they notice that there are um, three other townsfolk there. There's uh, Ugra is actually one of the people who enlisted to help. Because, again, uh, Ugra is a very... He's very hard-headed and one set in mind. Uh, he likes to kill things. He likes to be the strongest person in the room. Uh, very brute. Um, <clears throat> then there's a monk named Yalu, who is a monk at one of the local... Um, so there's a monk sanctuary actually near this town. Uh, he's kind of appears to be like the, the lookout for, you know, trying to keep the peace. Um, he does not... Uh, He's not, like, associated with uh, Ugra in any way, but um, he's probably the next... He's probably the second most uh, rich person here. Um, not necessarily... Many would expect that. It's just that he's very high up ranking in the monk's temple over there, and he kind of keeps tabs on this town and sees what it needs and sees if the monks or any way can help or, you know, kind of things like that. Um, it's kind of weird to explain say um but either way so yalu's there and then one of their uh town folk um who uh, is a guard part-time uh he's there as well um so these guys are defending waiting for um some kobolds uh, a couple kobolds actually sneak almost all the way up to where the goats uh would be at actually do i have that um oops let me go to games Okay, unfortunately, I do not have it. Um, I, I edited that one um, because there was uh, stuff done to it. Anyways, um, so that happens. Uh, some kobolds sneak up roughly up to where the goats would be, and some sneak up to where the um, chickens would be. Uh, at this time, um, Nashurda, which is a rogue, has spotted some of them and has made combat with some of them. Uh, Magus and Nashurda have not seen any yet, and I believe Yalu has seen a group of them as well. So Yalu starts to lay them out. Um, eventually, a couple uh, a round goes by, and Magus, Nashurda, I mean Magus, Dio, and Ugra have all seen Kobolds now, and they are taking them out. Um, <clears throat> Yalu. Uh, is running around the battlefield as monks do, taking out plenty of kobolds, no problem. Um, Yalu and Nashur, not Nashur, uh, Yalu and Ugra are very high level and are cleaning up these kobolds very easily. Um, no shocker there. Uh, Magus and Dio doing just fine. Nashur to struggled a little bit, but uh, it's just because he's a, a rogue fighting, you know, three or four kobolds at the same time. Um, and he doesn't have the sneak advantage um, most of the time. So uh, unfortunately, the battle goes good for, or fortunately, the battle goes good for them. Um, again, they took a lot of damage, but they were able to kill a bunch. Um, I believe, m other than Yalu, so Yalu and Ugra obviously killed the most. I believe Yalu ended up killing almost like eight or something by himself. Ugra killed like five, and uh, Magus, um, who happens to be a sorcerer, was able to reach a few people easier, so he ended up killing four or five as well. Uh, Yalu has no need for the money, he says, and splits it between the whole party, so everybody gets two extra silver from him. Um, I think Nishurda killed two, and I think uh, Dio did kill two as well. 
at this point, um, that's the end of that. The farmer thanks them and says, yeah, you guys can go back now, uh, and I'll let you guys know where can I find you guys anyways. Basically, like, hey, where can I find you to see if uh, there's anything we can do um, to, you know, if I need your help again. And uh, they all tell them that they're all shacked up at the inn and that you can find them there and what rooms and stuff like that. So anyways, um, they go... They go back, they sleep, uh, nothing you know, nothing really happens. They spend a day in the town. Um, they find out about this party, and there's a bunch of people that are telling them, like, yeah, you guys, yeah, you guys should go, you guys should go. Um, at this point, they've talked a little bit more and found out that uh, Nishurda is carrying around um, a grudge uh, because um, I don't think he actually goes quite into it, um, but he's carrying around a grudge. And they all decide that... Um, so Dio's uh, goddess had talked him into coming here, basically, and uh, he thinks he needs to go uh, and pray to her and find out more information. So he heads out of town, um, and he gets a, a vague vibe that he needs to go to uh, Winterhelm. Um, <clears throat> Magus also had talked to uh, some people. I believe he talked to Yalu. Yalu had this uh, crystal that he pulled out and spoke into it, and then a few minutes later, uh, Yalu comes back over to the group and says, Hey, uh, I've been told that she's been spotted up in Winterhelm. And they're like, Okay, well, we need to go to Winterhelm, yada yada. Um, <clears throat> and so they ended up doing this uh, thing out in the woods, um, doing a ritual to try to praise to Peter's god. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Dio's, Dio Tree Speaks God, um, Mistra, I believe, yeah, it's Mistra, or Mistra, something along those lines. Um, <clears throat> she f eventually finds out, uh, they ask the goddess about that dagger that, uh, Nishurda's carrying around. It's a wooden dagger, um, that was the prize that Nishurda took and was offered $5,000 for, but he turned it down and his family was murdered for it. Um, he asks, basically, like, hey, do you know what the heck this is? Um, the goddess says to come back at a certain time. We'll look at it more in depth. Um, but she would actually need to see it. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> they plan to do that tomorrow night, um, with a bunch of the ritual stuff that they have. Um, and for now, they end up going to... Uh, the town's meeting about the tomato plant because a bunch of people told them like hey you guys should really go to this tomato plant meeting um, they get there and they find out that there's a bunch of tomatoes on tables a bunch of chairs there's a small stage set up it's at one of the local farms and they're like why are we here and then they find out a little bit later that it's not actually a plant meeting it's for the townspeople to get rid of Ugra the townspeople here, they don't like Ugra that much because he's very bossy and demanding and wants things done his way or no way. He's The problem is, though, is that he is very much so money-oriented. And he will pay lots of money to do things that he wants to do because he wins the, tour, the monthly tournament pretty much by himself. The monthly tournament gives out... I believe it's 500 gold to the winner of each winner's bracket, and he participates in all three of them. He participates in the single, the double, and the team, which is a team of four with one person on the sidelines, if need be. Um, and he participates in all three of them and wins all three of them every month. Um, every now and then he won't partake in the team one. Uh, basically the team one, he just hires a bunch of people. Uh, that's what he does. He hires archers to shoot people for him. Uh, that's it. Um, so anyways, uh, that's how he's got so much money to just pay people off to do things. Um, and the townsfolk are arguing that, uh, we need to find a way to get rid of him or we need to seriously just get up and out him. Uh, Yalu is also there, and he's trying to keep the peace and be like, hey, listen, people, um, you know, you guys see the bad that he does and the bad that he is doing, but you don't see the good. Like, he's mostly the reason that this 
that this farm is actually still up is mostly the reason that, you know, your guys' economy hasn't completely tanked and you guys are, you know, paying a gold piece for a piece of fruit. You know, he's he explains all of this to them and stuff like that, and they're all they're all very much against that still and actually ask for some people to rise up and take arms against him in the tournament. Because if they can overthrow him in the tournament, they might be able to overthrow his fame as well. His fame may start to crush down on him. Um, because, you know, he's winning, 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 and then all of a sudden, boom, uh, he hasn't lost in 10 years. A single battle at the tournament. He has not lost in 10 years. Um, he's in his, I think he's 26, so, you know, he's been doing that for a long time, and in 10 years he has never lost a battle. Uh, so the townspeople are like, listen, we need somebody to be able to beat him in the single, and somebody to beat him in the uh, team. Now, they were like, we are willing to pay for some of it. Everybody here is willing to chip in a little bit of money to help get the initiation fee to payment. Um, the initiation fee is like, I think it was five, uh, I think it was three or four gold for a single, and then it was uh, five gold for a team. So they they all offer up, and at this point, Yalu walks out because he thinks it's ridiculous that people are actually going to go forward with this. He scolds some people and says, like, listen, this is not the way to handle things in life. Um, you can't just, when a problem comes up, you can't just fight it. So the party, uh, speaking of Nashurda, Nash, uh, Nashurda, Dio, and Magus, uh, they all kind of volunteer. Uh, Dio doesn't like Ugra. He's had some bad encounters with him at the tavern already and is like hey i'll i'll do the single if you guys pay for it i'll do the single and so he agrees to do that and then magus dio and nashurda agree to do the team one all together however they just need to find a fourth person and technically a fifth person um <clears throat> at that point after that's all said and done with then the actual meeting of uh plant harvesting kicks off and um yeah, the party pretty much leaves at that point. Most of the people in the audience actually leave at this point. Um, and then they all head back to the town. They go to bed. Um, and nothing really exciting happens um, then. But, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and stop it here. I don't want these videos to run too long, so this has been going on for roughly 20 minutes. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and please catch me on the next video. Uh, the, it'll probably take two more videos in total to get fully caught up to where we are today. Again, this happened months ago in my time. Like, we're talking uh, November of last year, um, October, September time frame. So, um, yeah. All right, guys, I'll catch you guys all on the next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying this, please subscribe and like. I'm going to make this into a playlist so you guys can just watch it one after another. Thanks, guys, and see ya.